Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We've done similar problems before. I don't know if you remember. I hope I haven't made this problem before. I don't think I did. But anyways, we have x cubed equals x squared plus x plus one third. And I'll be presenting two methods. And remember, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, right? There was a Diophantine equation. Hopefully you've seen that video. x squared plus x equals y squared, right? And I told you, whenever you see this, expression, especially when there's a perfect square on the right hand side, it makes sense to multiply both sides by four because that's going to give you a perfect square and eventually difference of two squares. There's quite a few problems in number theory that uses this trick. But wait a minute, we see that again, so should we multiply both sides by four? No, no, not here. Because you have an x cubed on the left, if you do multiply both sides by four, it's, it's going to mess up everything. So we should use something else. But guess what? That's going to be the second method. So let's proceed with the first one. All right, for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and try to use cubic formula. This will be incomplete, so bear with me, uh, because that's going to be a little painful. I just want to show you how to start it, and then you can hopefully continue from there. And by the way, I kind of set it up for you, and I'll show you what that looks like. So first of all, we're going to put everything on the same side, except for the constant. And then we, we should replace x with something. And here's how we can do it. To find the number that you're replacing x with, look at the general case. Let me go ahead and write it down for you. In this case, our goal is to get rid of x squared because that will be a depressed cubic, a cubic in depression, but it's good because it's easier to solve. Now, to be able to get rid of the x squared, we need to replace x with some other variable plus now here we, had, we do have a b as the coefficient we kind of need to negate it which is a negative b and i could kind of write it as a minus sign minus b over 3a so the 3 comes from the power if with fourth power the cortex you're going to use uh, 4 but that's the general idea and if you actually really do plug this in you're going to notice that x squared disappears or in your or new equation, you're not going to have a y squared. I should probably state it that way. The quadratic term disappears, not x squared. Of course, x squared disappears because you're replacing x with something else, right? Okay, cool. So let's see how we can proceed with this. But notice that with our, well, for our particular case, we should be using x equals y minus negative 1 over 3, which is y plus 1 over 3. And that brings us to this equation because when you replace x with y plus one third you're basically writing it like this make sense replace x minus one third with y and you're going to understand why i said that make sense okay so that's going to be my conversion after some work this is going to turn into something that looks like this i'm going to have y cubed minus four over three y equals 20 over 27 because you're going to have other constants you're going to combine them that's what you're going to get okay and then i need to consider the infamous or famous identity that i've been using all the time if you subtract 3ab times a plus b from a plus b cubed you get sum of two cubes which gives us the cubic formula because if you replace a plus b with y and uh, uh, 3ab with four thirds and a cubed plus b cubed with 20 over 27 you get the same equation. There you go. You got yourself a system. So the system is AB is equal to 4 ninths. A cubed plus B cubed is equal to 20 over 27. And if you cube both sides, you get A cubed B cubed equals 64 over 729. And then by substitution or whatever, you'll get a cubic equation in A cubed or B cubed. And then you can solve it. But guess what? That's going to be really painful. So all you have to do is you kind of need to replace B cubed with this minus A cubed. And that's going to be a lot of work again. Okay. Anyway, so what do you do with this? You just continue and solve it. But I'm going to show you something much, much better than this. Because this problem was designed for the second method. Don't be mad at me. I wanted to show you. I want to show you alternative solutions. I hope you don't mind because everybody is different. And everybody learns differently. And hopefully knowing multiple solutions will help you in the long run. Okay, so this is called or this could be called a sneaky equation. Remember I told you 
With the Diophantine equation, we multiply both sides by 4 because that helps. With the cubic case, you don't multiply by 4, you multiply by 3. Okay, let's do it and then I'll tell you why we did that. When you multiply both sides by 3, you're going to get 3x cubed on the left, big deal. On the right hand side though, we're going to get 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. It's amazing, I should probably say not just when you see x squared plus x, but x squared plus x plus one third. So that combination is just amazing and rare, but it's very helpful. So what does this look like? Take a minute, think about it, and what does this remind you? If you said x plus one cubed, you got it. If not, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it because you will get it in time. Now, let's go ahead and add x cubed to both sides and on the right hand side, we do get a perfect cube. And that's just perfect. Remember in other problem, we got a perfect square that was uh, helpful. This time we got a perfect cube because the left hand side is also a cube, which is nice. So now we get the following from here. 3x cubed plus x cubed is equal to 4x cubed. And the right hand side can be written as x plus one to the third power. So both sides are perfect squares. Nah, not really, but we can manage. 4 is not a perfect cube, but we can make it. We can kind of write it as the cube root of 4x to the third power, and there you go. It's kind of like a semi-perfect cube, right? It's good enough. Now, since we have cubes on both sides, we can actually cube root both sides, and when we do, we're going to get a real solution. What about the other solutions? They are complex because there is no way you can get other real solutions from here. That kind of shows it. But I'll show you how we can get those complex solutions. Let's go ahead and write this as follows. Cube root both sides, cube root of 4x equals x plus 1. Since I want to solve for x, let's go ahead and bring the x terms on the same side. And use factoring, we're going to take out x, cube root of 4. Oh, that's such a weird cube root cube root of 4 minus 1. Now notice that the cube root of 4 is greater than 1, so this is going to be a positive answer, great, and x becomes 1 over cube root of 4 minus 1. If you're really obsessed and you wanted to rationalize the denominator, you could just multiply by the conjugate, and to see what the conjugates are, uh, you could basically call this a, and you're basically looking at a minus 1. You should multiply it by a squared plus a plus 1 to get a cubed minus 1, which is going to get rid of the radicals. So what is a squared? It's going to be the cube root of 16, and then plus cube root of 4, plus the cube root of, uh, wait a minute, not cube root of, it's just 1, divided by that. But the product at the bottom is just going to be a cubed minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, so this whole thing is going to be a 3. There's a 1 here, so the answer is going to be then the cube root of 16 plus the cube root of 4 plus 1 all over 3 in the most rationalized denominator form. Make sense? Okay. Now, how do you get to the complex solutions? Hmm. To get to the complex solutions, you kind of have to consider the way we factor this. So let's go ahead and get back to that cube root of 4x cubed minus x plus 1 cubed equals 0, right? Well, because we subtracted it, it should be 0. Awesome. Now, left-hand side is a difference of two cubes, so let's go ahead and factor it that way. Cube root of 4x minus x minus 1, and that kind of disappeared because with the first method, we just cube root both sides, so we didn't do this. But the second factor is just going to be, remember, from a cubed minus b cubed, you're going to get a minus b, and then a squared, which is cube root of 16x squared, plus ab, which is uh, cube root of x, I mean cube root of, not cube root of x, cube root of 4x multiplied by x plus 1, and finally x plus 1 squared, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Now the first one we already know that's the only real solution. The second one is going to turn into a quadratic, and I believe you can do it. Uh, you're going to multiply, you're going to get an x squared, you're going to get another x squared from here, and you have an x squared, combine them, turn it into a quadratic, and guess what? The solutions are going to be complex, but they're going to be very complicated. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph 
first the real solution well why did they write it away this isn't that weird well you can kind of simplify this hopefully and you'll get the answer and these are the complex solutions oh man this is just crazy and let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions a cubic graph and a parabola by the way i don't think this parabola touches the x-axis but it's very close and then they intersect at a single point which gives us the real deal and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye